On today's podcast, I sit down with Stacy from Without a Hitch. Without a Hitch is a full service event and coordinating company. They plan anything from corporate events all the way to weddings. Um, they specialize in weddings and helping the brides take some of the anxiety and stress out of the big day. I hope you enjoy today's podcast. So thanks for joining me today on our podcast, Stacy. Absolutely. I'm excited. So, um, so we were, we're kind of talking, uh, what made you want to become a wedding planner? I have always enjoyed parties. Oh. I have always enjoyed helping people. Um, I am a person who can talk to anybody. Um, I enjoy just... I know that, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy making people happy. And if I can walk away from a party, whether it's a 50th anniversary, a surprise birthday party, or a wedding, I've accomplished what I dreamed of. Yeah. Just helping people. And if I can step away and say, wow, look at that smile. <laughs> I just did my job. Yeah, I mean, that's the definite, you defined my experience with you the first time. Like, you talked to me like you knew me. I'm like, who is this lady? You know, I'm like, do I know her? You know, you really made me like Where'd step back. Where'd that face come from? Yeah, yeah, you made me step back and go, do I know her? What? She's so, okay, okay, cool. And then we just kept running into each other at weddings, and it was yeah. just like, oh, yeah, she's really nice. That's really cool. Yeah. You know, so that, that speaks wonders of what your personality's like and how you can deal with clients and um you know we're sitting in your office right now so tell me a little bit about like your your journey on getting here you know my like, journey on getting here i had three storage units my house full of decor and a husband saying y'all need to move out <laughs> <laughs> you're taking over <laughs> and i was just doing it on the side um for friends and family i wasn't charging and I just um, had a passion to jump in all, all feet, hands, everything. And um, I talked to my husband, and he said, well, you may need to look for a place to go then. What, what, what's your next step? And I said, okay, I'll start looking. And I found this building. I talked to the landlord. And within three weeks, I had a contract, a lease. And without a hitch was born. <laughs> so you, you just said it, the name, um, where does that come from? Like, what made you think of that? You know? Well, I, I actually truly did not think of it. I have to thank my coworkers um, that I, the business I was working at before here. Um, I said, I, I don't, I, I have no idea. What, yeah. what do I call just, myself? Stacy's wedding planning? No. <laughs> um, and so we had a, Everybody just kind of gave me a bunch of names and without a hitch, just it, it like as soon as I said it, it snapped and it, it was in place. And I thought, I want every event to go off without a hitch. Yeah. And it just it stuck. Yeah. It truly from start to finish. It, it was born. <laughs> it makes you uh, made me think about it. You know, made me think like, what is, what is she trying to accomplish here with that, with that name at first? And then, you know, oh yeah, event planner, you want everything to, you know, just fall in line, you know, yep. so. From start to great. finish. I mean, I mean, that being, that being said, um, how long have you been doing it? How many years? So prior to Without a Hitch being born, I had been doing it on and off for about three years. So a wedding here, an event here. And just kind of over the years, just started collecting tons of decor and things like that. And I um, started in October of 17. We just finished our first full year. And um, now going into our second year, we've already topped our first year. And that's, I have to recommend and, and thank all of our past Vend or vendors for one vendors, thing, um, clients. our clients, my staff, um, word of mouth, um, 
I just, I admire even the other vendors because we work so well together. And that's where I'm at today is, is I can actually step back and smile because we had such a good year yeah. and I didn't know how fast it would take off. I didn't know where I would be even at the end of the first year. So what, what's your, um, how many clients do you usually take? What's your goal, I guess, for, for each year? I would like um, three weekends every month booked. It's um, not bad. We have me as the main um, operator. We have two assistants, and then we have six um, staff members um, that do setup, take down with us, and then we have another four family members that help if needed down the road. So we're already growing. I, I had yeah. three people last year and this year we're already at nine. How many events do you do at a, at a weekend? Um, we can handle up to three. Three, three events. Yep. Nice. We can do and two full packages on a Saturday, one on a Friday, and then we can still also do a coordinating. Okay. Yeah. Um, is that all local? Um, within about an hour and a half. You'll, you'll travel we can, about an hour and a half? No, this? if I have that many, I can be within about an hour and a half. Oh, gotcha. If I'm like this year, we're going to Toma, we're going to Ashland. Those are a one per weekend yeah, just because yeah, we're so far so away. Far, yeah. If I'm within the town and I'm at one, Jen can be at the other, you know, Ashley could be at one. I'm okay with that. Um, but if we're totally, completely yeah. off the grid, <laughs> then it's one per weekend. Yeah. So when you um, are talking with your clients, you're setting that impression that they're not necessarily getting you. You're, Correct. you're getting someone from your staff, your trained um, event coordinators. Yep. You know. Jen, who is my um, right underneath me as an assistant, and then I have Ashley, my daughter, who's been doing it for quite a few years now. Um, Jen, this year, just took her first one after a year of working with me. Um, so, yeah, you do extensive training. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Before yeah. I say. Yeah. You can um, You can hire. You have to ri- hire the right people. You, you know, do. I've, I've found that out, you know. And they have to have the same passion. Yeah. And the same drive. There's no grass that grows under my feet when I'm at a wedding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so what other what other services do you do? I know I know you're doing officiating for a while. Yeah. What other what other um, what other things do you offer? So we offer here at Without a Hitch. We offer um, a full package. Um, which means you have us from start to finish. We help with everything. Then we have just a partial, like a planning and designing um, and uh, budgeting, where we just help you plan and design your wedding and budgeting. Or you have a day of coordinator. So we work with you about a week before the wedding, making sure your vendors, getting their contact information, getting everything no, I'll, I'll let you know oh. if someone's coming. Sorry. <laughs> I thought I saw someone. Oh, about. and then, um, so then the day of your rehearsal, we're there making sure you're walking down on time, you're to you the music, we work with your vendor and mm. your photographer, and then your officiant. And then on Saturday, we're there making sure your vendors are set up on time, candles are lit, and that's our day of coordinator, just keeping things on track. Yeah. Kind of taking the stress off of you of, yeah. of worrying about that. Yeah, you're you're there present. Yeah. Then we have my officiant. I also am an officiant. So if you're getting married outside of a church or um, at a pavilion and need one of those, we also do that. And then we have our full line of rentals Mm -hmm. that you just want to come in and rent linens. Yeah. Just want to rent a preacher frame or wedding chairs. Totally your call. Yeah. Or little uh, rings for... um... (laughs) Little rings for napkins. napkin rings, <laughs> a little bling. <laughs> <laughs> I bring bring that up because we had a little bit of a, a conversation at one of the weddings. We about did that. <laughs> a little inside uh, yes. information there. Um, so you work with other other vendors. Are you present with the client for those vendors? So because I'm, I do video and yeah. photography. Um, would you tag along with if they wanted that? Is that part of your services? Absolutely. Um, we are available whenever the bride and groom or parents need us to be available. Yeah. We just had, um, I think it was right before Christmas, um, they were doing their food tasting and they don't live in the area. I wasn't going to the food tasting, but they wanted me there just to pop in and see them and say hi mm-hmm. and, and kind of check in. 
Um, and I ended up staying. Yeah. Great food. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, I got a good menu this year coming up. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I first got here to do the podcast, you were on a, a client call with uh, Mother of the Bride and um, it's just kind of never end. You know, the it, work never ends. You're always there for them. And totally understand that. And Absolutely. Um, do you handle the, like, because you're planning the event and coordinating with the client, um, do you handle making the payments for them as well? Some of them I do. Um, it depends. Um, we've added a couple corporate accounts. Um, and they only want one 1099 going out. Yeah. So I book all of the vendors. You subcontract and them. And then I subcontract out. them out, and then I submit one invoice to them. And then do you have to submit the 1099 yourself then, or how does that work? I submit um, – I take it in as revenue and then take it out as an expense. So it kind of washes it out. So, yes, I would have to do both ends. So you'd have to give the other vendors the 1099. Correct. Then, yeah. Yep. Um, so – I know, like, walk me through, like, a typical um, wedding day. Like, when do you get there? When does it start? It might start the night before, the week before. Um, what, what, are you, um, what, are, what are your expectations that you're going to set for that? Um, my expectations that I set for my clients is I'm available two days prior to the wedding up until Sunday after the wedding. Perfect. No matter what time, day or night. It, if they need me, I'm there. Um, if I'm doing a wedding uh, full package, we start setting up most of the time on Friday. I don't leave until I'm comfortable that night, and then I'm back at it 8 o'clock the next morning until 2 or 3 in the morning Saturday night, depending on what's needed. So my hours, and even when we sit together at weddings, I'm there a lot more than... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Your typical photographer, yeah. videographer. Had some, uh, had some pretty tired conversations with you. I remember. Yes. Yeah. But also it's the excitement. Yeah. To me, it's an adrenaline rush. Well, it, it usually kicks off or it it stops around dinner time for me. You yep. know, so it's like, I, I got how many more hours left? Okay. I got to find a way to feel energized and put that, you know, that. That energy forward yeah, and that yeah, smile. Yeah, and <laughs> smile and make sure the clients are taken care of, yep. you know, all, all that stuff. And, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a long day, you know. Yeah, and my downtime is usually in between the ceremony and cocktail hour. And then when the dancing starts, it's about 11. Mm, so yep. I have a little bit of downtime. But, but you're still available for Absolutely. For clients, I'm still yeah. sitting there. Have my headset on, ready for a spill, ready for a <laughs> refill. <laughs> what, uh, what, what kind of uh, moments, crisis moments, have you um, that you can share? Have you uh, ran into, like, be it the uh, dress rips or you know something was forgot or you know? Yep. So as soon as you said that, I knew one right away. I had a bride two years ago at the pavilion, the Rothschild Pavilion, beautiful venue. Um, everybody knows of it. Yeah. Um, they were getting ready to go cut their cake, and she had had red wine on the tables. Oh, no. And a girl came up with a glass of red wine and tripped. Oh, no. And went right down the front of her dress, even before cutting her cake. Oh, no. So we ran. Um, one of my staff members ran and got so soda water. Or salsa water. I can't yeah. remember which one. I think it was soda water. And I always carry an emergency kit. Sewing, needles, thread, scissors, black markers, tape, <laughs> you name it. It's just a wedding emergency kit. Yeah. And it had baby powder in it. Oh. So we dabbed her, poured the salsa water, dabbed it, poured salsa water or club soda. I can't remember which one it is. <laughs> And then doused her in baby powder and then spun her around and the red wine disappeared. Really? Wow. Baby powder coated the sequins and the appliques enough to kind of just cover the red wine. Her photos are beautiful. Yeah, you wouldn't know. I was just going to say you wouldn't be able to tell <laughs> <Nope>. in photos. <laughs> 
without a secret, uh, without a hitch, trade secrets here. Yes, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So that's probably one of the worst things that I could imagine would happen. Um, I've been in, you know, dress blowouts in the back where they just kind of got to like sew them in into it, you yep. know, and then um, lots of bridesmaid dress blowouts too. You know, I, I don't know where or how <laughs> or, or you know, it almost always wants a wedding. Yeah. There's always a bridesmaid that either has a shoe issue or a an issue with a dress, yep. you know, and it's, it, it's almost to the point where when I get their itinerary, I try to pinpoint, okay, when is that going to happen? <laughs> Because, because uh, <laughs> it it can cause a lot of stress in that. Oh day, yes, you know? it can. The one thing that has never happened to me, knock on wood, um, is having to set up the cake table. That oh, I think yeah. is my worst anxiety. The cake falling off. Yes, oh, yeah. I almost. I think it was one of your events. I almost backed into the. You cake. almost did. Yes. <laughs> At the pavilion. Yes. It was by yeah. the doors yep. with yep. the shears up against yep. it. <laughs> yep. And you're like, what are you doing? <laughs> but like, that oh, is my that. one anxiety is that. And yeah. it's never happened to me yet. Please, Lord, don't let it happen. Well, my, <laughs> when, I, when I have client meetings, I always, um, not necessarily I'm worried about the cake toppling, but I always say, place it in a spot where there isn't a lot of people. You know, because that's the last thing you want to have happen is a guest fall over. And Absolutely. I've done a ton of, I've done a couple weddings where the cake table's like in the middle of the dance floor. And I'm like, well, that, yep. you know. I always <laughs> like it up against a wall yeah. or a door or something behind. Yeah, Not exactly. Not like you yep. said, out in just the middle. Yeah, yeah. Because kids run around. Yep, kid will run into And it nowadays... Or- there's tons of kids. I mean, I was at a last the last wedding. I couldn't believe the amount of kids. Yeah. Now the next one I have, no kids were invited. So it just depends on the yeah. group of people. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like that's kind of uh, off topic, but yeah, having the kids running around on the dance floor, you don't want the cake there. Definitely no. not. You want to um, create a kid's corner yeah. or a kid's table, something to give them their own space. Yeah. Even yeah. at a wedding. Is that something that you offer we to? We do. Yep. Like yep. coloring books? Or- we do coloring books. We'll do a table of cheese sticks, apples, you know, Go-Gurts, juice like boxes. For them. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Because kids eat all day long if you let them yes and that keeps them occupied and has their own space yeah definitely Mm -hmm. and they like if there's a photo booth they love the photo booth oh yes they run through that photo booth a lot and yeah um i was like i was gonna say um oh another thing too is they always forget the cake cutter like They'll get this special, like handmade that says their name and the address or, and the date that and they it's were sitting at home. It's sitting at home. Yep. Like, always we forget always, it, and they end up cutting it with like a plastic yep. knife or something. We always carry a spare. Yeah, great. Yeah, knife cutter and server. Yeah, it's ju- it's just your crystal handle, but it's not a plastic knife. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Like yep. we did one um, where they had to send someone back half hour. You know, mm-hmm. uh, to get it, and then they come back, and we had to push it, and that kind of adjusts the timeline too. Yeah. You know, first dances are off then, and um, well, and your like photographers that. pushed back because you really want those pictures. Yeah. Well, and now you're like you said, your timeline is now off. Yeah. So I had one extra um, uh, when you said you know t- catastrophes or whatever. Yeah. We had a gentleman and a bride um, forget their marriage license. Yeah. That's so when I that's officiate, huge. That's worse than the night. It is. Yeah. I always take that um, marriage license on Friday at the rehearsal. So there is that chance. If you don't have it on Friday, there's time to get it yeah. to me before the wedding. Yeah, that's good. Mm-hmm. good. Is, aren't they required to sign it ahead of time now? No. No? Okay. No. I yeah. have to have it present before I can marry them. Mm. And they can sign afterwards the... the um, the best man or the maid of honor that they can sign afterwards. Yeah. But the marriage license technically is supposed to be in the officiant's hand 
before you marry them. Yep. And then the, um, you have to send it out, what, 48 hours or something like yes. that? Yes. It has to be sent out. Yep. So yeah. if I have one here in Marathon County, I hand deliver it on Monday morning because yeah. I don't want to be in charge of <laughs> right. that. And then if I have to send it out for a different county, because I do travel, I send it certified mail registered receipt so that there's proof that it went yeah. in the mail on Monday. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I remember my wife and I, we got married in Mexico and the, the marriage certificate was all in Spanish. So we had to get it uh, transcribed. Yeah. And that was an ordeal because we technically weren't married until we signed the transcribed mm -hmm. one. And that took like a week to get yeah. it transcribed. And then we had to submit it. And um, it was very interesting. Yeah. Like, I think we still have a copy of the, the, the actual original one. Really? Yeah, um, I don't speak Spanish, so I have no idea what it says. But uh, yeah, we have had it somewhere. We're taking Spanish lessons. So. Are you? Yes. Yeah. Do you have a lot of uh, Spanish speaking I, I I've had one um, and it was it's just nice to have a little extra um, because the, that language is becoming more popular in yeah. our area yeah um, so um, we've started it's just on I don't know some video we found on <laughs> YouTube or something um, but we're just starting so yeah. we thought that would be something and nice to I'm, add I'm sure you have a higher Asian clientele too yeah absolutely yeah yeah this area um, we're very, um, diverse. Yes. Diverse. Yep. Yeah. And we do local fundraisers. Um, we've done, um, humane society. They just had their, um, new year's Eve party. We did some donations to them for decor. We've done marathon County humane or, um, honor society. Um, um, so we just, we try to help out our community as much as possible also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So getting back to the, the day of coordinating, the biggest thing that I've seen in all the weddings that I've done that don't have a coordinator is everyone goes to the bride. What do you want done with the boutonnieres? Where do you want the, um, the, the flowers? What do you want this set up? Where do you want the cake set up? And it's like that that's the last thing you should be asking yes. that person during that time as they're getting their makeup done, as they're trying to write their vows, you know. And those wait till the last minute to write their vows. A lot of people do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, they want to be in that moment. Yeah. And um, so that I, 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 I've been recommending going with a planner if they don't have one, when, when they book me, I'm like, well, you should probably, at least think of that. And I always give those uh, examples. It's just like, you don't want to be in the middle of that time and people asking that. And I've even like said to people, I'm like, well, just ask me that. And I will ask her, you know, yeah. and I just kind of take So that over you're that and, one person instead yeah, of seven yeah. different people at 20,000 different times. Yeah. And I, whether you, um, have the time and, oh, it doesn't bother me. It, they can come and talk to me. Yes, they can. But now think about it. You have one day. Yeah. And that day goes by so fast. By the time you know it, you're already dancing. You've already been married. You're out of your, you've already eaten dinner. You've, and you step back and go, wow, I didn't even Where see did my gift go? table. Yeah. I had that memory table. Yeah. You just don't have that time to physically step back. And take it all in. Yeah. Now imagine you have a coordinator. Oh, Stacy's got that. I don't have to worry about it. She'll come get me when I have to cut my cake. Yeah. I can sit here and talk to Aunt Susie, talk to Grandpa Joel, yeah. and not have to worry about anything. And if they do get that question, they just say, go ask Stacy. Yep. Yeah. Stacy's handling it. Go yeah. ask her. Yeah. And I always work, I feel great with all my vendors. I ask them. Can I get you a glass of water? Do you need anything? I'm going yeah. up there anyway. Yeah. Because you're busy tending to the video or the pictures yeah. or the music where you don't have time to even care for yourself. Yeah. You know, so that's another part of it. Yeah. We make sure that the bride and groom actually can enjoy entertaining their guests. Yeah. And you, you bring up a good point, too, is you always make sure that there's a vendor table, mm -hmm. you know, 
you can read all all the articles and stuff and they say well maybe you shouldn't feed your vendors or supply a break time for your vendors or, or whatever and um it's not really a break it's just a nice place to set up a home base yes. and you know because we're up and down throughout the whole reception anyway but just to have like a nice home base where you're not feeling like you're intruding on anybody because you're not really a guest at the at the wedding but you are there to document the wedding so exactly just not having a little corner or like another room outside of it because we need to be present for it right you know? if you're so, not sitting there yeah. at a table at a wedding and you're videotaping it yeah. or i need to make sure okay she's getting ready to cut her cake mm -hmm. i got to make sure that her cake is set up the plates are there everything's ready i won't see that exactly and yeah. i could miss it yeah. Well, I've just been there, and I know for videoing, you guys go at 5 a.m. to do a sunrise or depending on what Sometimes, they chose, yeah, yeah. or I'm there at 8 a.m. I don't leave till 2 a.m. the following morning sometimes. Yeah. When do I have time to run to McDonald's? Yeah, I don't. Exactly. So to have that meal is a nice, like you said, a center. I can sit down for five minutes, grab four bites Talk to a vendor, hey, we're coming up. You want to get ready? I got to yep. get ready. It's a nice way to communicate nice game plan, within yeah. your own vendors too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're going to do that? I better get ready for the next thing. Yeah. It kind of is a, a check-in. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it makes it easier, like you said, for communication. Mm -hmm. Just keep that communication because um, the photographer might be over here or we're over there. And it's not always possible because we just we just did a wedding in October that had 500 guests at the pavilion. We did have a vendor table and they were nice enough to have it, but there was like five other guests at that table too that they just were kind of overflow on that on that uh, table as well. So it it is it it gets especially in that situation it gets hard to plan. So yeah, yeah I don't I don't envy you at all in planning and worrying. Where, where to put people or um, having that conversation with the bride and groom, who should be here, who should be there. You right. know, I don't, um, I have those type of conversations, but it's more of, okay, don't take their picture. Okay, great. You know, don't, right. you know, don't, don't get these two people together. You know, mm -hmm. that's easy. But if you're spending the entire night dinner sitting next to that person, that's a problem. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, we're almost, uh, wrapped up here about a half hour um is there anything else that you wanted to plug or anything coming up um, well we have our uh expos coming up in our local area we have um the one here at the um century or century world? central central or central oh gosh century world down central. in stevens point um the central wisconsin wedding expo we also have signs of love um, which is coming up at the end of January, same weekend, actually. Oh. Um, are you doing both at the same time? We are. Okay. Um, Saturday and Sunday, we're at Century World. Um, and then on Sunday, we're at Signs of Love that weekend. So the 26th and 27th weekend. Um, we <laughs> were um, treasure hunters also within this business. We always look for unique pieces and things like that. So in March, we'll be headed to Minneapolis again for the Junk Bonanza. <laughs> so that's always fun. Um, you know, this year's bringing a lot of excitement. We're um, looking at a new location within our same um, block here. He, um, the landlord's building a new building, so we'll be moving into that. Yeah, we'll have to... Talk about that yeah. when we get in there again. Yeah, this year. so that'll be exciting. Um, we've got great news coming uh, for 2019 at the end of this year. So when we move into the new location, we'll be adding some extra things to our business. So look for that information. A um, lot of traveling. Um, we go statewide. Yeah, you just got back from vacation, didn't you? I did. It was nice and warm <laughs> where I went. Um, Unlike so, here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, we've got a lot of stuff, you know, happening with 2019. We're already booking 2020. Already got two for 2021 on the books. So. Um, What's the best way for someone to get a hold of you? Facebook? Facebook Messenger, email, um, our website, um, has a, a question page where they can send contact information. 
Um, right now we are on Wedding Wire and The Knot. Um, is you the know. is the shop open just by appointment? Right it now, is so? open by appointment. Um, we do have regular hours Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from three to six, and Saturday ten to three. Um, probably starting in April, we'll go to full time hours okay. once we get out of the winter season. Cool. cool. So yeah. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. Absolutely. Thank you.